Welcome to the Lever City Podcast. My name is Bob Dalton, and each episode I interview people doing grassroots work in their communities. This episode, I have the privilege of interviewing Patriotic Kenny. He is an amazing, amazing new friend of mine, and we also have his neighbor Amanda here with us joining in on the conversation. So, Kenny, so, so nice to meet you, man. Thank you very much, Bob. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I just don't uh, have enough words for what you're doing and to come here and to video this. I really appreciate it, Bob. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's an honor. So I really want to, before we get into the amazing work that you're doing with the scooters and gifting scooters to people that formerly were in the military and are in need of mobility, I want to dive into your personal story. And we're here in Minnesota. And have you lived here most of your life? Yes, I have. Born and raised. Awesome. And you're loving it. Oh, yes. It's a little chilly this time of the year. Yeah, but I love it. You know, I've been around a few states, not all of them, but I'd still say this, we got the best state. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And when you went into the military, uh, what year was that? Uh, when I first joined was 1959. Wow. And how long did you stay in the military? Uh, how long? Yeah. Uh, I was in approximately with reserve time a uh, little over five years till 1965 is when I got discharged. Okay. And in the Navy? Yes, Navy. Amazing. When you think back on the military years and all the years that you spent in the service, is there a memory that comes to mind that brings you joy? Like, is there a a time during service where you think back and maybe in all the chaos and the, some of the, a lot of the hard times, is there a time that stands out that you were like, man, that was just a a beautiful moment? You mean when I was back in the service? When you were in the service, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yes. Uh, probably my favorite moment when I was back in the service. All the amazing guys that I met that I served with on my ship and in boot camp. When I went through boot camp, they were not respectable and, you know, just a different type of people, it seemed like, you know. Got along perfect with them. So I think that's what I'd have to say. That was probably my most Marie, my memorable moment was when I was with the guys that I met in the service. Your crew. Yeah, the crew. The, the crew yeah. back then. Yes, yes. That's amazing. Yeah, so, And what do you feel like the military did for you in regards to your character and who you are today? Like, is there is there something that really stands out with how important the military was for you in, in shaping who you are? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Bob, what the military did for me is they made a man out of me. I mean, I sure, I was, uh, I mean, I had a lot of good qualities, uh, but nothing like when I was in the military. What I learned is uh, be respectable and be honest and be a gentleman, be a, like you are. Like, you know, don't be a, be like the person you are. So the main thing, they taught me to be respectable with other people and to be honest. That's what I think. They made a man out of me. That's what I think. When you left your time in the service, was it sad? Was it, were you excited? Like, what was your feelings when you, when you, when you departed? Well, Bob, it was both excited and kind of lost because I really, at that time, I I didn't know what to do, whether to stay in or to go home and, and that, Mm -hmm. it was a hard decision because I did, in a way, I did want to stay in because I did enjoy it. But then on the other hand, I thought, well, I don't know. I miss my family. That's the hardest part. You know, when you got a family back home and everything. So I made the decision to get out. A lot of times I have sat back and I kind of thought, I said, well, I wish I would have stayed in, but I didn't. But I, I still had a good life when I was in the service. So that's what happened. But Yeah. And then when you got back home and got back settled in, what what did you do after that? Then I went back on construction for a while and got married. After I got married, um, I had a chance to get a a job at a a Ford plant in St. Paul. Very good job I had and got to to work there. And I worked there for 32 years and retired out of the Ford. Ford Motor Company in St. Paul. So I had a real good job there. That's awesome. Well, we are sitting here with your neighbor, Amanda, 
And you guys are doing some amazing work here in the community and beyond now. I really want to dive into how we arrived at donating and giving mobility scooters to people that are in need of them. This all started shortly after COVID, correct? Yes, it did. Bob. And so you spent the majority of COVID by yourself in an isolated situation. During COVID, what were you going through and, and feeling during that time? Well, at that time, I was feeling very isolated. I was by myself, you know, couldn't do nothing, couldn't go any place. And uh, fortunately, I did have a people that brought food to me and took care of me as far as that there goes. So, But I was very isolated because I was by myself. Do you have any more family in this area? Uh, yes, I not in this area. My my uh, closest uh, one is my daughter. She lives down in Hastings, so okay. it's a ways for her to travel. Yeah. And my boy, he's out of state. He goes all over. And my other daughter is in St. Paul, and she, she don't drive. So uh, it was hard, you know. Uh, it's hard I, for everyone, too. Yeah, yeah for yeah, everyone. It's... Yeah, not just me. You know, everyone went through this. It was an awful deal, but... We made it. So. Yeah, we made it through. And yeah. so right at toward the tail end of COVID, you started going back to the coffee shop. Share your story of how you and, and Amanda met. And I would love to hear from you, Amanda, from your perspective, how you guys got connected as well. Sure. So a friend of ours who owns a coffee shop saw Kenny come in after COVID. And she had actually taken care of Kenny a bit during COVID, brought food to him and stuff. Because he, at that time, only had three little teeth. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so he was pretty gummy. So he couldn't eat much. And so brought him soup and different things and kind of checked in on him. And then the first time he came into the coffee shop, she was so excited to see him out and about. And then the next day I came in and she said, you've got, you've got to know Kenny. He lives like two blocks away from you. I said, no, I've never met him. And she's like, he's a jolly old guy on his scooter. You've got to meet him. And so the next day, my friend Jenny and I were walking in town and we saw this guy stroll up on this red scooter with flags and mm -hmm. and obviously that was kenny and so he the said the scooter's are you fully decked out yes yeah. <laughs> said are you and it had like flag duct tape on it yeah <laughs> you know like grass roots yeah. and I said are you kenny and he's like i am and um i said you know mara our friend said we should meet and he goes oh it's a pleasure to know you and we sat down jenny kenny and i jenny kenny and i that's a ring <laughs> and we <laughs> just talked for hours and hours and that's kind of how we met initially and then jerry jenny's best buddy or Jenny's dad, Kenny's best buddy, got added in, and the four of us became a crew. He's the same age as Kenny, and we've all kind of been there for each other since that day, and that was April, I think, April of last I, year. I believe it was, yeah. Yes, no, it was, April. Only April yes. of last year. Mm -hmm. You guys have yeah. done so much together. I yeah. know. It feels like we've known each other Been eight years. years. Yeah. It feels like I'm eight <laughs> years old. <laughs> and are you guys, do you guys like get together and go to the park, or like what's kind of your normal activities you guys do? Oh, we do everything. So, everything. We we go to the park. We go out to eat. We go to uh, different shows. You know the. Uh, we go to movies. We movies, go down trips. Yeah. We go. I mean, every, you name um, it. We go the shopping. bowling. We every shopping. We do. We go. All, you name nothing it. off the table. You guys do it all. <laughs> Correct. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, and opportun So many opportunities have come up through everything that's happened. And yeah. So we've yeah. been there every step together yeah. so it's been yeah. really an honor and a privilege yeah and you've yes. been such a huge part in this whole thing so let's talk about the scooters and how that came about so you already had a scooter yeah cruising around town yes i already had one bob at the time and i cruised it was an old scooter but i decked it out with many flags because that's what <laughs> i wanted on that scooter like Amanda said, they were all taped on, but they stood, they stood out. You know, I, that was pride. That was my pride of, uh, you know, American flag. Uh, you know, freedom. That that's I wanted that on my scooter and myself. Anyway, that's how I cruised around with that old scooter, and uh, until it broke down that day. And where did you break down at? Like, uh, like was it like? Were you at a specific location? Were you stranded or what? Uh, it was. It was probably coming back from the coffee shop. Uh, it all of a sudden stopped. Nothing. Just stopped. I don't know. What am I going to do now? I mean, even though it was, I could have walked a block. I'm sure, you know, with my COPD. But anyway, it stopped, and I didn't know what to do. So there's a there was a lever or something underneath there. I shut it off for a while and then left and sit. I sat there. Press that thing again, the button, and then it'd go again. And just made it right before the house, and I did that again. So, so you made at, it back. At least I got them. Yeah. So 
I thought, well, what am I going to do now? So, um, And then you found out about this. Yeah, yeah, well, I had texted Kenny. Kenny texts. <laughs> I had ca- texted him and called him that day because we you know, were in touch almost daily. And I hadn't heard anything all day long what was going on. And it was like 9 or 9.30 at night. And I remember I hadn't heard. And I thought something had happened, you know, mm-hmm. health-wise. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Kenny, if you don't respond like I'm coming over, is everything okay? And he finally texted. And he was like, I'm okay, just really sad. And so then the next day, the crew, the three of us, showed up at his house. And he sat out on the scooter and kind of told us what was going on. Yeah. And then you were just sharing with him, like, hey, the scooters broke down. And in your mind, were you like, this is kind of it for me in this next season? Yes. And, yeah. Wow. So that was kind of like the fun was over because that's how you felt. And then what made you take some action on it? You were like, all right, we can't have we can't have a man behind here. We got to do something. <laughs> right. I mean, Kenny, his joy is contagious. So to see Kenny so down in the dumps and he hadn't eaten or doing anything like, you know, at first I thought, let's go through the VA. Let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. And I knew that was going to be a lengthy process. Um Kenny made an appointment to get in for an initial evaluation, whatever, to see if he could get a new scooter. But the same day in the timing, it was quick. Everything was going so fast. I had taken a video of him talking about how it broke down and how he was so upset. Posted that video the same day. So then people said on TikTok, set up, you know, on Patriotic Kenny, TikTok, posted a video and people said, you got to set up a GoFundMe. We'll donate. You know, we want to get him a scooter. And at the same time, like I said, I knew he had an appointment with the VA. So I kind of waited a little bit and he came back from the VA and Jenny and I went over after work and said, so what happened? And he was upset and he's like, you know, they told me I got to do this referral and I got to go to this doctor. I got to see this doctor. I got to start six months of physical therapy and I got to do this. And oh, like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Like, I can't go through all, jump through all these hoops. And that was like the confirmation, you know, something's got to yeah. happen. So we set up a GoFundMe. And that was just to get enough money to get a new scooter. Yes. Wow. And it really, I looked up the cost of like a basic yeah. scooter, you know, and it was like, I think it was like $1,000 or something for like the cheap like Walmart mm-hmm. brand. Mm-hmm. But people donate and donate and donate. And within that day, we had raised $5,000 and Kenny didn't even know it was established because I didn't want to disappoint him if nothing happened. <laughs> for sure. And so, so it happened. And it then, did. Jenny and I came over after work and sat down outside. And I was like, you know, I'm really sorry about the VA. You know, what What can we do about this? And he was like, I don't know. But, you know, he was so upset. And I said, well, actually, and the kind of the line of the video that really took off was, you know, mm-hmm. strangers on TikTok, people who've never met you but know mm-hmm. you and love you, have rallied around you and have given money. And they've given you $5,000. And did you have to explain to him the same conversation what TikTok was? Like, Nope, he already knew. He knew he had a TikTok account. And that was about a month before I'd showed him some videos. (laughs) This is how it works. This is what it looks like. Patriotic Kenny. He didn't know what GoFundMe was. I just said, you know, people are able to give money, Mm -hmm. kind of like a bank. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) You know? (laughs) And so you raised more than what you needed. And Mm -hmm. so what what were you thinking when she broke the news to you? I fell down to cry. I could not believe it, Bob, that she got that much just to get a scooter. Uh, and I think about that every now and then. And I I can't help, but I just sit down and cry because so many nice people out there that they gave to my uh, uh, needs. Mm-hmm. It was just unbelievable what she did. And- well, what's amazing is your emotional for both the kindness of people, but also what mobility means for you. Share a little bit about what mobility means to you and and how important it was. What it means to me, Bob, as far as getting around mobility with a scooter is I can go out and meet people because I love that. I love to talk. Just I always been that way. Always been that way throughout my whole life is to get out and talk to people especially at coffee shops or even just on the sidewalk, Veterans Park, I was going, I go there all the time. And you can see these people, you know, you can see the problems they have, just to sit and talk with them, say, hi, how are you, I'm Kenny, and just talk to them and, and try to make them more hap- happier. So uh, that's what I enjoy. And if I wouldn't have had that scooter, I, I couldn't be doing any of that stuff. So. Yeah. So you got your brand new scooter. You ended up raising 
more than what was expected. So then right. you guys were like, oh God, what do we do with all this? So right. what was the next steps after that? Well, I mean, and, and to add, you know, Kenny's not an affluent person. He doesn't have excess resources at his disposal. So $5,000 is life-changing for Kenny, truly life-changing. Like he was in a place that was a really, the environment, the home itself was moldy and it was really bad for his health, but he couldn't afford any other place. And so with that $5,000, he was able to pay off some medical debt and stuff that was really holding him back mm -hmm. and able to move into a place that was more healthy. I mean, truly life-changing, $5,000 was mm -hmm. everything. But then within you know that first week, people had given 110,000. I mean, that's beyond life changing. <laughs> that's, you know, $110,000 is a lot of money. And so after seven days, we that's closed- That's like a million dollars to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or more. After seven days, we closed the GoFundMe. Cause it was, like, it was <laughs> honestly like, this is getting wow. out of control. Cause it went viral on TikTok mm -hmm. and it went viral on Instagram. It, he didn't have an Instagram account at that time. No. So it went so viral on TikTok that you got ended up getting deemed TikTok's grandpa. <laughs> yep. That was the nickname for you that everyone started giving you. Yes, as a matter of fact, Bob, one of my uh, one of my fans even sent a T-shirt to uh, TikTok grandpa. So. <laughs> and he's on a scooter. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, that was cute. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. So with a hundred thousand, you were like, okay, we got to rally the crew, and yep. the crew being Jenny, Jerry, Kenny, and myself. Yep. And you guys gathered on like a little committee meeting. We did. We and, have a little union, actually. We and, call ourselves the local twenty three forty seven. Okay. For, oh. <laughs> Love and it. we also we have our meetings once a month on our local twenty three forty seven. We got union cards and everything. <laughs> yeah, we do. I enjoy that do. because I was very active in the union when I worked for Ford Motor Company. So I was vice it. president. So, so you got I your cards. Sure. You got yep. the crew set up. So yep. the crew gets together. And what does that conversation lead to? Well, you know, we kind of said, "What do you feel comfortable with?" And really, Kenny led that discussion because it's his money, right? Yeah. What do you want to do with this? And so we paid off the debt and got him in a really good place and took care of all the things he needed. And there was still so much left over. Mm. And so we took, I think it was $20,000 of that yeah, and I put it towards giving back scooters to veterans. Yep. And that covered 20 new scooters for veterans, wow. you know, 20 lives impacted all throughout the country. Wow. And so how did you go through the process of finding your first few people to donate to? We set up an application, a nomination, not okay. an application. It's, it's a short little thing. And it's pretty much the same still today. Actually, there's a link in his profile, in his bio. And you click on it, and it's just a short couple questions. You can nominate a veteran. And that's it. And within, I think it was like two weeks, there were over 800 applications that came in. Okay, so we're giving away 20 out of the 800. <laughs> um there's obviously a need and it's obviously not being wow. met and we can't do it and so we set up a new um fundraising account for scooters for veterans separate from kenny all the every penny of it goes mm -hmm. to scooters for veterans and that's set up right now mm -hmm. and that's Correct. is that a website or a gofundme or it's a gofundme currently we're working on establishing a nonprofit for that sole and purpose and are you the only scooters for veterans out there so if somebody searched it mm -hmm. okay yeah Awesome. That I know of. Yeah. I've never, I've looked, scooters but I haven't seen veterans. any others. That's yep. amazing, Kenny. Yes. And it's hashtag scooters for vets. Okay. If you click that. Scooters for vets. <laughs> yep. And then tell us about like one of your first, the way that I found you was I saw the video of you giving a mobility scooter to, to Tim. To Tim. Yeah. And what was moving to me about that was Tim seemed like a pretty rough guy, maybe a little quiet extremely emotional or, or so, someone that doesn't seem like they could be emotional that often kind of just kind of sturdy you know yes and you were able to connect with him in a really practical way in sharing that you both have copd copd yes we both had that have that same problem yeah and like you say bob yeah he was a little rugged at the time and when he found i found out that uh donated that school uh, mobility scooter to mm -hmm. him it was just amazing he immediately got emotional yes and uh, yes. he understood what was happening yes he did you know he, like he come he was a little burly at yeah first. a little burly yeah. he was he was a little rough around the He's edges probably figuring out what am i even doing here mm -hmm. and what is this yeah you're right he was um, Bob, and, and he melted like butter and that choked all of us up because it was so unexpected yeah. our conversation was a little prickly you know just mm -hmm, well, yep and then as soon as he saw the scooter and i look over and he's just tears tears yes. oh. <laughs> and maybe in the way that you approached it you just being a genuinely nice kind person but, but also doing this out of excess like you're doing it out of your needs have been met you know the feeling that it felt to receive something like this and now you get the opportunity to do it 
But what I loved about it was it was you demonstrated a level of humility. Like there wasn't like you trying to be the hero or you trying to be the, the I'm giving you this. It was just, it was very much like it felt like almost peer to peer. You both got to experience something and he just got to experience it a little later than you. Mm-hmm. And you got to walk him through that process and you you related with him. And I thought that was really beautiful. And then when he got on the scooter, he took off. Yes. <laughs> he took off. And, and you guys were like, is back. he even coming back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was gone a long time. And what was his story? I mean, how long was he unmobilizing? My Boy. understanding, I mean, I can't remember the details exactly. It was maybe two months ago, but it had been a while. He has COPD pretty severe. And mm-hmm. so he's on oxygen and yeah. the tanks and everything. And he was very dependent on his family for doing everything, for getting around, for walking. And he had a little walker, you know, but you can only go so far and then you have to sit. And like you, it doesn't really help with the physical side. It had been a while. So when he took off and didn't come back, I mean, the TikTok video is a minute long. He was gone a while. <laughs> that was not shown in the video. It was a while. And to think about that, and that, that moment has stuck in my head too. Mm. Kind of like free as a bird, you know, you've had people just not oh, nagging man. on you, but like your every move always dad mm-hmm. or, you know, and with the best intentions and there for you. But for him to just leave with his tank and just see ya, that had to be the most freeing mm, moment. Yes. And so I don't blame him for taking off and not coming back. Yeah, no <laughs> feeling that wind hitting him yes, and just going and being free. And then you did a couple more. Oh, we've done about 50 or so yeah. I think, at this point. And not all of them in person? No, we've only done three in person okay. so far. Two in Texas and one and in Minnesota. And today's the fourth? Today's the fourth Whoa, in person. Okay, cool. We're so excited. That's amazing. So yeah, right after this interview, we're going to a park and we're doing the fourth in-person giveaway it's going to be amazing yes it is um oh. well yeah it's amazing to see all of the people sharing it people giving it and what i always lean to try to believe is like i really do believe that the majority of people want to help mm-hmm. you know and i think that the media paints this picture that like the world's going to hell and you know but at the end of the day i think there's a lot of people out there that they're searching for inspiration they're searching for hope and because you gave a glimpse of that kind of hope a lot of people responded to that in a positive way and so i think it's beautiful because it was so it started with a kind neighbor noticing a need doing what she could leading to you getting what you needed and then this abundance of what can we do for others and It happened on such a local level, like Mm -hmm. on the same, it's on one street Mm and what it's led to around the world and the inspiration. So it's really beautiful. What does it mean for you to be a good neighbor? Because I think that we live in a time now where there's still a little bit of that isolation. Mm -hmm. Even before COVID, it was like, you know, you can live next to somebody, but you don't really want to affiliate with them. You don't Mm want to engage with them. And we, we have a lot of that, especially in America, you know? And so what does it mean for you to be a good neighbor? And yeah, it, it's so true. I think there's some hesitation of like, my neighbor lives so close, I don't want them up in my business. Mm-hmm. You know, I want my my privacy, my, my own life. Time. Yes, yeah. I don't want to have to be on when I'm at home, you mm-hmm. know, and I get that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, having that connection is so huge because it impacts, it can impact every part of your life in a really positive way. I mean, you can still have boundaries. It doesn't need to be, let's talk every single second. I mean, you can still hey, good to see you, and go in your house or sit outside. But at the same time, everybody has a story. And as Kenny always says, struggle on. You know, everybody has a struggle. And you don't know what they're going through. And I teach middle school kids. That's what I do. And and teaching them how to be kind to people. And as Kenny's slogan kind of is, happy and humble. You know, to be happy and humble. So it means everything to me to, to get to know your neighbors and to get to know people's stories because everyone's living their life and doing the best they can and they're right in your proximity (laughs) that's your mission those are your people you know yeah happy and humble how did you come up with that i just just did just like i struggle on and that's what you have to do bob because that's what it takes especially now it always did before too but especially now is 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 the struggle on it helps me because i still think about the, the problems i had in life and they were bad they were 
it, it, subvert, and I did. I struggled on, and these people I meet, you know, when I'm on my scooter that I meet at the coffee shop or just at Veterans Park, I can kind of spot the people that need to be talked to and, or want to talk, but they're scared. I try to do that, to talk to people and to tell them, you know, uh, if they got kids and what are they going to do, go to college or go into service and stuff like that. So I get a lot of uh, nice information uh, that I love is out meeting people like that to share my stories, what I can, you know, with them. So Yeah, that's beautiful. And to see them talk. And struggle on being like, we all go through struggles. Yes. We're all working through something. Yes. And we got to keep moving forward. That's we got to right. keep moving forward. Yeah. What does it mean for you now that you're in a place where you're able to contribute on a deeper level to give back locally? I am very excited and very humble about, about to, that I can do this because uh, there's so many out there that need needs uh, the veterans and arms that need stuff that I can be a part of it out there and give them something if I can, donations that I can do because... I know I went through that with the VA, so if I can do that, that's my journey, you yeah. know. You know, and, and I'd like to add to that. We've we've done a lot, you know, especially in January and February, we, we focused a lot on kindness. And so finding little ways in our local community that we could give back and be kind. We went to the, the veterans home where veterans are, it's like a nursing home, you know, for senior citizens. And we gave away a carnation to every single person in the home. You know, or little things like we met a guy at Walmart, you know, and just took him out and sat and chatted with him and got to know his story. And I think a big thing for Kenny locally is spending time with people. Yeah. Really, that is, I think, number one, like that's key is spending mm -hmm. time and getting to know people's stories. And then as far as the scooters locally, being able to give one away today, mm -hmm. that's very exciting. And we have another one this week coming up too locally. The local ones are they hit home you mm -hmm. know they're in our backyard mm -hmm. and yeah. those are extra special it's great to be able to reach a broader audience but being home you know that's home is where the heart is you know that's that's mm -hmm. the root of where everything kind of grew so it's nice to give back yeah well i want to close with i'm so inspired by this conversation with the amount of kindness that you guys have put out into the world and what you've been able to achieve what does amanda mean to you uh, what, not, uh, Amanda, what does Amanda mean to you? Because I think that it all started full with circle Amanda. Yes, with Amanda uh, reaching out uh, and, and you guys be developing a friendship. It is so nice uh, to develop a friendship with Amanda now, the time I have known her, because, uh, you know, she started this, all this, and just, I got such a, amazing words for her. It's unbelievable. To me, she's a daughter to me, and then some because if I wouldn't have met her, none of this would have never happened, so. Well, it was beautiful to hear your guys' story and really, really grateful for the time that I got to spend with you. If anyone's listening and they want to support, they can visit the GoFundMe Scooters for Veterans. Mm -hmm. You can find the link in Patriotic Kenny's profile as well. Patriotic Kenny's on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok's <laughs> grandfather. All day long. That's amazing. <laughs> well, Kenny, such an honor, such an Thank honor. Thank you so much, Bob. It's a, it's a, it's just an honor for me. I ain't got the words what to say from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing, for what you did and what you're doing, Bob. It, it means so much to me and getting to know you and coming in here and doing this. Thank you so much, Bob. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Love Your City podcast. If you want to find ways to get involved in your community, you can visit loveyourcity.org. If you have any questions or recommendations of grassroots leaders or nonprofits that we should be aware of, email us at media at loveyourcity.org.